This story happened about nine years ago and sometimes comes to my mind. It creeps me out. So I was on an adult dating site. One of the fetish types, don't judge me. It looked like some fun. Anyway, I was stupid and gave out more information than I should have. I was chatting with a guy. He asked me at some point what I do for work. At the time, I was working at McDonald's, so I told him. He asked which one. I stupidly told him which one. We chatted off and on. We hadn't been chatting for too long. I also stupidly gave him my phone number at some point. He would talk about how he wanted to meet me on my break and have some fun on my break. I told him no thanks, I don't bring that lifestyle to my job. Anyway, I checked my messages just before I was due to clock out of work. Luckily I did. He mentioned that he was at my job and told me what he ordered. I think it was a Big Mac meal. I was like, um, okay, well, don't expect me to do anything with you. I'm not interested. He then got upset and wasn't accepting that I wasn't interested. I was also scared because I had sent him a face picture of myself, but I had never received one from him. I really wasn't too interested in him, so I decided I didn't need a face picture since I wasn't going to meet up with him. His interests weren't what I was looking for, and I have a hard time straight up saying that I'm not interested and just slowly start ghosting them. Now luckily, I hadn't told him my work schedule, so he didn't know I was about to clock out. So after clocking out, I told my manager that I was on a dating site and this guy just showed up to my work and I have no idea what he looks like. That I was just going to hang out in the back in the break room for a bit. Luckily, she didn't judge me and was just like, oh, okay. So I waited about half an hour before I left. I didn't have a car at the time, so I had to walk home and I was afraid that he would see me and try to pick me up in his car. Luckily, no one followed me, so I was in the clear. So creepy guy, let's not meet. I don't think he ever messaged me again, or I ended up blocking him or something. I don't know if this is really all that creepy, but it creeps me out that some random guy just decided that he would show up at my job and expect me to want to meet up with him. So now, I just give vague responses to where I work. I don't work at the same town I live in, so it would be harder to pinpoint my exact location. This opened my eyes and made me more aware of the information that I give to strangers. I was going through my own version of high school hell in the late 2000s. I met a boy on one of those outdated chat rooms, such as ICQ, but specific to my area. We hit it off, mostly in MSN, and became really good invisible friends. He was insignificantly older than me. My story is going to be a patchwork of sparse memories as it was stretched out over a course of two years. We'll call him Steve. Steve and I mostly indulged in very wholesome and friendly conversations with no romance or sexual interest in sight. One thing I did notice right away that it was almost constantly online, which was quite unusual back then. A big passion of his was music. Steve had an extensive knowledge of religious hip-hop targeted towards teenagers. He would find an obscure song with very few views on YouTube and send it to me. I was a doom metal kid, but that didn't stop me from enjoying the occasional carefree rap about a high school love or recreational drug abuse. We had spent many nights listening to music and reading lyrics together. All these beautiful moments pushed me closer to him, and he became one of my best friends. I was alienated from the community due to my unusual style and love for metal. Being introverted didn't help either. Anyone who didn't fit the mold in terms of appearance, behavior, or taste was pushed beyond the margin. I had brightly colored hair and wore chucks and a regular black t-shirt as I was too poor. I also liked making yarn, spike and chain jewelry. My irrelevancy and disinterest in the popular kids' lives inspired me to look for a new social circle, and that's where Steve stepped in. My best friend at the time was Jane. She was my classmate and a part of the Unpopular Kids Club as well. Jane was ostracized because she lost her virginity at a very young age. People would look at us and ask out loud, how are you two best friends? In their defense, we were a walking contrast. She wore pink, leopard print, and flashy shoes. And then there was a random black hole next to her. Our friendship has stood strong 
against ten long years, and then we went our separate ways. Anyway, I introduced Jane to Steve, and sparks started flying right away. He was blown away by her beauty, and she loved his goofy personality. In between MSN nudges and prehistoric smiley faces, a new love was born, and witnessing it was beautiful. My greatest comfort in life was coming home after school, turning on my computer, and chatting the evening away with both of them. Somehow, all the yelling in the background faded away and was replaced with laughter of one. Yes, she was in love, and I found my gang, but our infatuation didn't blind us completely. We sensed that something was off, and that we might be talking to a bag of air the whole time. Although we lived in the same part of the world, we weren't exactly roof to roof. Still, he never asked if any of us would be interested in hanging out in person. Steve sent a few pictures of himself. Apparently, he was this unreasonably attractive tanned boy with a six-pack and piercing blue eyes. We didn't only receive his pictures. No, he would tell us a little backstory of every one of them. One pictured him and a teddy bear his girlfriend had gifted him. Jane was dying to talk to Steve on the phone, and he would always come up with the most transparent excuses. I was crossing the street, dropped my phone, and a bus ran over it. Or... I have a terrible voice. He was a singer in a band. He didn't even try to construct a good lie that would make sense in this universe. Still, the entertainment value and the emotional depth we had achieved with this kid kept us chatting. We did have our reservations, but they didn't stop Jane from turning her camera on and flashing him on New Year's Eve. One day, he told us that the blue-eyed Jim rat kid was, in fact, not him. We kind of already knew that but were anxious to see what he would come up with next. Steve sent us a few modeling photos of another guy who looked even more conventionally attractive than the first one. At this point, we were completely sure that we were being catfished, but decided once again to enjoy the ride. My memory is a bit challenged, so I can't say for sure when Jane and I stopped talking to him. He was never rude and not one threat ever came from his fingers, but I still can't tell if our breakup was amicable. It's possible that we were finally spooked by the thought of an older man or a group of people posing online of one innocent, music-loving boy. A few years ago, I was randomly digging through my contacts and found his name. He had a Viber, and when I opened it, I saw that his profile photo was that of an older woman. This is the greatest mystery of my life. Jane and I spent hours guessing who Steve could have been and turning all the disturbing possibilities into a joke. She used to say, who knows whom I showed my titties to. I have a few theories, but one thing I could say for sure is, he was not a teenage boy. Thing is, whoever was doing this, their immature way of self-expression was extremely believable. Everything was on point, from Steve's choice of words and music taste, to a young man's awkwardness around a girl he liked. I'm selling my mom's car. She bought a new one and isn't very internet savvy. So she asked if I'm willing to do it for her and she'll split the money with me. If nobody buys it, she'll just write it into my name. Some people have came to take a look at it. And one evening this man calls asking if it's still available and if he can see it. I said yes and gave him the address and he arrived after an hour or so. At first he seemed okay enough and asked questions about the car. My husband was also there, and they went for a test drive. When they return, he starts looking for faults and complains how he thinks that the price is too high. We tell him that the price is not negotiable, as the car has few miles, and has been kept in good condition. He gets more and more angry, demands for a lower price, and states that we couldn't get it sold with the current one. We tell him that in that case, we'll simply keep it. He gets even more angry and starts yelling at us, how he drove from another town, etc. We tell him we understand, but there's always a possibility that you might not be buying the car. He yells and curses and demands we sell for a significant lower price, and we refuse. Finally, he asks one more time if we agree with the offered price, and when we say we don't, he gets in the car and drives away. I was a bit nervous after that, as the psycho knew where we lived, but it happened two weeks ago and I haven't seen him again. Still a bit nervous though.
About seven years ago, right before I met my now husband, I joined a few dating apps. A few of my friends had wonderful experiences and met their now spouses, so I figured I'd give it a try. I was 21 at the time and had recently lost quite a bit of weight and was teeny for the first time in my life, so I was ready to put myself out there. I didn't take it too seriously, let the men come to me, and eventually, there's this guy that caught my eye. His name, well, we'll call him Watson. He was 23 and handsome, in my opinion. We matched on Bumble and kept talking for quite a while. It turned into texting and then phone calls and then him asking to meet up. Now don't get me wrong, I didn't have any superpowers that I could tell the future, but when he asked to start seeing each other in person, I just had an off gut feeling. I thought maybe it was due to my anxiety, but later found out, I just knew. After blowing off plans and saying I was busy multiple times, he got mad and blocked me on everything. That was fine. I felt a bit bad, but I was also 21, and he gave me the creeps, so good riddance. Fast forward six months later, I had met and started dating my now husband. I got a message from Watson on Facebook and let him know that I had met someone new, and I wished him well. He got angry, oddly for someone I have never met in person, calling me names, swearing a ton, so I blocked him. Then came the spam accounts, the new Instagram handles, more name calling, which became threats. Thankfully, he did back off eventually. I was so relieved. I had never dealt with someone like this before or after, so I was generally scared. A year later, I was in Target shopping for shoes and makeup. I check out, head to my car, key in hand. I had just opened my door after loading my trunk when I heard someone yelling my name. I turned around thinking it was a friend or coworker, but it was Watson. I got into the car without a word. I definitely wanted to fight or flight mode and was ready to fly. The last thing I saw was him standing in the middle of Target parking lot after chasing my car. It's been years and I haven't heard or seen from him and I hope I never have another creepy encounter. First off, I know better than meet people at their homes, so yes, this was stupid of me. I acknowledge that I acted in an unsafe way for my own well-being. I met Brandon on a dating app. He has been awkward to talk to, but we have stuck to texting, so I thought maybe it was just nerves and the form of communication. We have similar interests, so I kept the conversation going. He messaged me the other day asking if I wanted to come over and watch the new season of Witcher. I hesitated and asked if he was inviting me to his place. He said yes. He also quickly added that his female roommate was home, or else he would have not asked. I decided to go. Stupid, I know. I entered his apartment and he was the only person there, sat down on the other side of the room from him, and he got up and came to sit right next to me. He turned the show on and the next thing I know his pants were down and he was asking me to sit on his lap. No condom. I'm not on birth control as I just got divorced and I'm currently waiting for the doctor's appointment. And he was aware of this as we discussed kids, pregnancy abilities, because I have teens and he has no kids and wants one. So not only did this guy think I was going to have sex with him the first time I met him, he was cool if we got pregnant, apparently. I stood up and went to leave and he says, wait. I look back and he's actually asked me if I would give him a hand job. I was just shocked and left and told him good luck. I'm a male in my 30s now. This happened about 10 years ago with the onset of Tinder and swiping apps. New to the game, I mostly wanted to get some action, but totally naive and not realizing what kind of Pandora's box can be opened meeting strangers online. I matched with a cute girl. We flirt message over a couple days and I get the vibe that she's down to fuck. We had plans for a few days, but the day before, she booty texts me late. She says she's been drinking, sends me some revealing text and invites me to her house. It's late and I'm only thinking with the lower half of my body. She sends me an address that's kind of in a sketchy neighborhood. Whatever, not my first shady booty call. I get closer to the house and let her know that I'm there. Weird, semi-developed neighborhood. The houses look partially finished. I do see a light in the basement, but I get weird vibes. She makes a weird comment about that. 
and not to worry. I'm feeling sketched out and I'm obviously committed and horny. I get out of the car and I feel the most intense sense of dread to bail. As soon as I turn around, I hear running from behind me, multiple footsteps. My balls shrunk into my ovaries as I ran to the car, opened the door and locked the door. I see three figures wearing creepy masks banging on my door windows, windshield, and one of the dudes swings his bat onto my windshield. Huge crack, and I tried to start the car. I dropped the keys. I was so scared. I got the keys and turned the ignition and slammed on the gas. One dude hit my side mirror and fell. I almost ran into the street pole. After recovering from a heart attack while driving, I raced home and spent the next 24 hours replaying the whole thing over and over again. Never told anyone. I made up a story about a deer hitting my car to explain the windshield. Guess I felt dumb and desperately wanted to pretend I wasn't really that gullible. I live in a small town and a few years ago, our local market had taken new owners. They fired all of the employees and completely redid everything, including obviously hiring new staff. At the time, I was a regular for around five years. It was super convenient because I lived right down the street. I didn't have a car then, so I shopped there daily, sometimes multiple times a day. I'd build a rapport with the original owners, elderly, and banter with the original employees older locals. I only knew one person by their name because she asked after years of exchange and it turned out we shared the same name. But that's about where our passing relationship ended. Moving forward, new owners, reopening, new staff. I got a car and my business there wasn't as frequent but still pretty consistent. Needing a drink, snack, or missing an ingredient for dinner. I'm a relatively friendly person but also super anxious, especially with men I don't know. So when the new staff came in, I waited in line, smile, say hi, pay, thank you, and dip. They were all friendly, but one of the cashier was a little too comfortable. He would lean over the counter. When I said I don't need a bag, he'd put my stuff in one anyway and touch my hand when handing it over. It made me feel super awkward and off. I also did a local yoga class, and after class, me and the other women would get drinks at the market and walk around to catch up. The creepy cashier would always make a weird conversation about our class. I stopped going there for a little bit. Then my car decided to stop working, and then I had no choice but to start frequenting that market again. The creepy cashier was excited to see me and asked where I'd been. I don't remember what I said, but I kept it casual. Over the weeks, he crept on me. He never asked my name, but had asked if I was married. He saw my ring. He asked me a million times if I had IG, Facebook. I glazed over the IG question by saying I haven't had Facebook since high school, which was true. So what about a bypassing line about my IG? It actually worked and ended our conversation. Finally exhausted from evading his questions, I caved when he asked me if I had IG. I said yes, and that I don't really use it a lot. Oddly, during our transaction, the register was on the fritz. My card wouldn't swipe and I handed it over to him and he manually added the card. And I was on my way. I went home, made dinner, put something on to watch and scrolled through my phone. I had a friend request and my jaw dropped. It was a fucking creepy cashier. I instantly lost my appetite and felt so uncomfortable. After deducing that he got my full name from my debit card and then looked me up, made me sick. I denied the request. Several hours later, another request along with a message, what you up to? Denied the request, ignored the message. Over the course of two days, there were multiple requests and multiple messages. How are you? How's your day? Hey. Trying to engage me in conversation with multiple selfies. Who sends multiple selfies? I continued to ignore him and then blocked him. I ended up talking to a friend and she said she always felt uncomfortable and that he tried to walk her home one night. He stopped working there a couple weeks later. Apparently, complaints were made. I'm shocked. In retrospect, I should have been more direct, no nonsense, in my responses with him. But I felt so anxious and uncomfortable, especially since it was down the street from my home.
So this happened in 2020. I was 11 at the time, turning 12 soon. And this guy, let's call him Oli, slides into my Insta DMs. I ignore him for a while, but then I get curious, so I reply with, Hi. The message has been pending for months, but he immediately replies asking my name, location, and gender. I was being dumb, so I told him everything, except my age. I said I'm 16. He said he was 19, turning 20. That same night, he started excessively telling me how he wanted to make love to me, in detail, and marry me, telling me that he wanted kids with me. Keep in mind he had been talking to me for approximately an hour or two. Then that harassment, he wanted to see nudes of me and didn't stop until I sent something. I just sent him a random picture from Google, but this was the first time this has happened to me and he just kept going. Over the past month or so, he had kept sending, wanting more, but I declined and he started to talk about what he wanted to do to me. He got angry, threatening me to look out that he would take the next flight to me. I got scared and told him that I was 12, trying to make him stop. Surprise, it didn't. Then he sent me a text. Are you scared? I dead ass shit myself. I didn't know where he was. I didn't trust his location he sent me. I blocked him. I unblocked him like a year later and he sent another message telling me to look out cause he's in my country. He was drunk, I could tell by the way he typed. He told me he was with girls prettier than me. I hope they were also older than 13, but he scared me again. I blocked him again. I later found out that after I blocked him the first time, he moved over to a new girl, a town over. So, dear Ali, I hope we never meet. 